of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer. The Philistines pitched in Apex. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> What's this? And the Philistines put themselves in the area against Israel and when they joined the battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines, I mean, defeated, all right? And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. Verse 3. And when the people were come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore had the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of enemies. Okay, keep that in mind. Okay, keep the ark uh, is, is, a, is, is, is where the presence of God, you know, uh, in those days it was a symbol of that. It was where the, uh, it was, the, there was a pot of manna, there was, a, there was a, an Aaron's rod that was left in, the, in, in that uh, in the ark. And it, it symbolizes the presence of God. And how many of you today, you and I are that ark. You and I are that ark where the presence of God dwells in us. Amen. The word of God dwells in us which the authority of God dwells in us, okay? And so it was the Ark, and how many of you, uh, is everybody familiar with that? Ark of the Covenant? Okay, so I don't have to get into that uh, too deep, all right? Let's go. After that verse, um, uh, was, did I read this? Okay, verse 4. So the people said to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phineas were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. Verse 5. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. Verse 6. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? They understood that the Ark of the Lord was come into the camp. Okay, verse 7. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp, and, and they said, War unto us, for there had not been such a thing heretofore. Here, here War unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. That means the Philistines knew the history of the ark, they knew the history of God's people, so they knew God was, they do know that there is a God and there's a living God, all right, and they rejoiced when the ark came back, okay, let's go, verse uh, 9 says, be strong and quiet yourself like men, O Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews as they had been to you, quiet yourselves like men and fight, and the Philistines fought and Israel was smitten, now they were defeated once, they were now defeated twice. First time without the ark, second time with the ark. Okay? First time with the presence of God, second time, excuse me, first without the presence of God, second time with the presence of God, they were smitten, they were defeated, and they fled every man into his tent, and there was a very great slaughter for there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. Verse 11. And the ark of God was taken by the Philistines, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phineas, were slain. So Eli, at that time, he was a judge. He was a priest. He was a, he was a leader, spiritual, and saying that he was a leader for the nation of Israel. Because after uh, Eli comes uh, Samuel, and after Samuel, and uh, later on, we have the first king of Israel, which is who was Saul. And uh, you know that's what the history tells us. And it's very interesting. This story is because it got me thinking. Here they are, they're going on this fight, they're going on this battle, and they are defeated. 400,000 people die. And they come back and say, we know what was the problem. The problem was, the ark was not with us. So they go out there, and they bring the ark from Shiloh, okay, because that's where the ark was, and bring it. And they're all excited because the ark is here already. And they think that now, it's not a problem, let's go out again. And what happened? They were defeated. In, and the ark speaks to us about the presence of God. In the ark was a part of manna which talks about the word of God, the authority of God. And there was a, a Aaron's rod, uh, there was a butter, it was in there and it was placed. And, and that's how God spoke to the people and that's how God worked during those days. 
And so they thought, well, if you bring this now, we will be okay. And uh, it got me thinking, it doesn't make us think, why were they defeated? They should be winning because they brought the ark of God. Correct? Really, the, you think about that. And I really began, and, and, and began to think more about, and I just felt what God speak to me on this. Just a simple passage is, some, you know, what happened with Israel was this. They used the ark as a good luck charm. Are you with me? It was a national relic. It was a national emblem. For, uh, for those uh, of you who been to Israel, when we go to, um, where do they have the uh, menorah? Sorry, it's it's in the wall, right? Remember that they have a huge cabinet. Is it near the praying wall, the Jerusalem wall? Yeah. If, if you go to Israel, the uh, the wailing wall, there's this huge cabinet, you know, a glass cabinet, and uh, they have this menorah. Menorah is for, uh, for it's, it's an emblem, you know, for it's you know, it's a national relic. You know, if you go to different countries, uh, different countries would have a national emblem, correct? And you know they'll have it's it'll probably be big and it'll say and you know uh, in, in some some countries it's sacred some countries it is you know uh, it, it's a national and and it's like it, it's like what it's like a, a statue of liberty in America <laughs> you know and it's like you know have you know I think we've seen enough movies to say how you know when the enemy comes and they always will break down the statue of liberty you know and even though you know it, it stands for something correct. You know, and it was something like that. You know, they, 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 it stands for freedom. It stands for what the country has gone through, and uh, and it was a statue of liberty. But it was it was a national treasure. It was a national. It was a relic, and that's the same thing. It was. And so what they thought was, if we just bring this, we will be okay. And, and and what happened is they brought it, and they went to fight again. They thought this will be okay. You see, they had good intentions. The they, they, they intention was good, but their motive deep down in their heart was not lining up with God. See, they, they thought if, if we just bring it in, our lives will be okay. We will go out there, we will defeat the enemy, and we will be victorious once again. What they were trying to do is, in a, I don't know, uh, I believe in all of us here, you know, we have spent, the, I think pretty much I know everybody here today, that you, you know, we spent much time in Asia. We don't have to go too far, we just go to Jordan, you know, in the evenings. They have all this um, palm reading. You know, if you go down the, go down the uh, night market, they have all these ones set up, you know, the little tents, and everybody has their little cubicles, you know, and, and then they, they'll, say, and they'll probably they'll give you a charm, they'll give you a small uh, and a talus, or they'll give you uh, things just to make sure that you are, uh, you know, you, you feel protected, you feel you've lived long. For, for a long time. Maybe, you know, they look at, they read your palm and they say, oh, well, this is not good. That is not good. You're going you're gonna to die soon. You will not get married. So you take this. Correct? You do this. You drink this. Correct? You know, we are, we are familiar with those things in Asia. And, and we do that. You know, I remember like uh, 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 when Pastor Sina and Shanta, when they were believing for children, just before Shanta was conceived, I remember uh, somebody took, came to, in Hong Kong uh, somebody came and told uh, Pastor Sidan, why don't you go to uh, a certain place in India? And uh, and there's this lady, and she calls herself, herself Amma, you know, and her mother, you know. And you just go to her and she will hug you, you know. And, and, and once again, your wife will be pregnant, you know, that kind of thing. So a lot of these things, you know, uh, you know, we, especially in Asia, it's very religious. You know, very, very superstitious, correct? You know, we need to have this, we need to have that, I need to have a little uh, bit of that, and, you know, and, and exactly, you know, what happened, that's what happened, that's the kind of mind Israel had. And when they had that mind, and they went out, and they uh, uh, fight again, and said, hoping this time we're going to win. But guess what happened? They lost. Something is wrong here. Something is wrong. And you see, many a times, that's what happens to us as Christians too. You know, we say, hey, oh, if I just come to church, my life will be okay. Oh, I came to church. Oh, just because I read the Bible, I will be okay. Can I tell you something? The devil reads the Bible too. Yeah. And the devil knows the Bible better than you and me. Yeah. Because he could even take the Bible and trick Jesus. This is what it said. He tricked the Word himself. Jesus, the Word that became flesh, he used that Word to trick Jesus. Amen. And that's the, and, and, and the Word of God. And the Word of God, it's really, uh, it, it works in us. 
and, and the Word of God affects us. And, 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 when, and when we let the Word of God to work in our lives, it will change us, it will transform us. Amen. Or we can just read the Word. And that's where I want to have uh, Pat right here to come and just give a quick testimony what happened last week. Because I wanted to see. It's just not coming to church. Just because you come to church doesn't mean it's going to solve your problem. Are you with me? See, we can come to church and go religiously as a good life. You know, have you, you know, you know, there are different people, you know, uh, uh, you know especially you know, when they're going home or you know, we have a Catholic church. Every time, you know, I see people, when they pass like, the church, they put the sign of the cross. You know, every time. And I would think, you can think to myself, what does that mean to that person? Suddenly the fear of God came in. Suddenly so that your day could go better. One time I remember, I'm going to, no, I was going back home. So, we, what's that? Grocery church, it's, it's on the other side, it's also a Catholic, uh, Kenosian church school, I think. And there's this uh, statue of Mother Mary right there. So there's this lady walking ahead of me. Uh, I'm a good distance, 10 meters. And then she was just smoking, and I'm just going. Suddenly, I think she didn't realize that the Ma Mother Mary uh, statue is right there. Immediate, I'm not kidding you. I saw this, because I'm looking like this, you know, forward, and she's ahead of me. She takes a cigarette, puts it behind. <laughs> and, then she looked, and then she stands like that, and then she goes, and then, you know, part of me got me thinking, and I want to laugh for a moment. It's like, come on, I can see, that statue cannot see, you know? You know, really, she's like, she's smoking, and it's, like, and, oh, you know, it's, it's almost she panic because there's nobody else. You know, I, wanted, I think she didn't realize I was, well, I was quite a good distance, but I could see, you know, or put a cigarette behind, and, you know, she does the sound, of the, and it goes off, you know? And I'm thinking to my, at first I laughed at it, I didn't realize. You know, many times we do that also. If I just read the Bible today, my day will just go better. But why do we read the Word? See, the Word will work if you apply it in faith. Come on. Come on, Pat, why don't you come and just let me know. Let, let us know what, what, how God touched your life. I'm gonna, how many of us remember how Pastor John... Uh, what was his last word in uh, last week's service? What was his last word? Jesus. 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 And what was the service all about? What was the theme? Encouragement. You know, it's only a part of my faith. Um, it, it's impossible, as Pastor John just said. You can read the Bible, you can come to church, you can uh, read verses, which I do, but if it's not in your heart, it's not going to work. If Jesus doesn't live within you, it won't work, it will fail. You know, I was reading, we were studying Ephesians. Uh, uh, got a little group the other day. There's something I read in Ephesians 4, 13. Till we all come to unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to a measure of statue of fullness of Christ. So we have to not just come to church, not just read the Bible, not just, it has to be within our heart. He has to live within us. us. And when we totally surrender his life, but I, which I can talk a long time about, but um, it doesn't work. So last Saturday night, it's to how the devil works. I was happy to be watching a football game. And... Uh, Something clicked in my mind. Actually, it was uh, a situation that took place in 1982. You all know that um, I had a serious problem with alcohol. Okay, uh, that went on for around 20 years. And uh, when you sober up, one of the things they tell you I'm going to restore you to sanity. Now, if you have anything to do with insanity is, I'll tell you what insanity is. In that 20 years, I was married three times and divorced twice. 
I've lived with that all this time. In a nine, nine, 1992, it came to a um, uh, the second divorce. This came to a, a battle that's beyond uh, uh, comprehension, and that has stuck with me and stuck with me and stuck with me. And, and last Saturday night, it just came back, and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I listened and I said to myself, in fact, I, I don't even think I slept that night. I got up around seven and I said, I'm not coming to church. I'm too tired. There's no way I can make it. And I said to him, oops, I haven't been in this church since May 4th, so the time we come here. And I, I knew I had to come. And what was the whole theme? Encouragement. What did, what did, what did Samuel say in, in 30? But David found strength in the Lord of God. And what did Pastor John talk about? That we will, as Christians, be attacked. We will be, Satan will do his best job to remove, to destroy us. And um, quite frankly, yeah, I walked away from here a totally different person. And, uh, you know, the other thing Pastor John said to us very clearly, he says, there's certain messages that we, we need to study. And, you know, I, I love Psalms. If, if you get me to uh, read any part of the Bible, I will spend more time than Psalms in any. I mean, even though we study it. But it says in, in 25, 4 and uh, 5, Show me the way, Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Very simple. It's, it just read it. Believe it. Put it in your heart. And he'll always be with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I ask that not so much about what I... Is, is, I want to see the power of the Word of God. The power of the Word of God is words. Something that happened, something that, that really affected his life. 20 years, and, and, and it came to assault him, assault his mind, assault his life, bring guilt, bring condemnation into your life once again, put you back into the pits where you were before. But how many of you know it's all possible? Just because he came to church didn't mean that he's gonna solve his problem. Maybe he'll feel okay for a while. But reason, Pat had a breakthrough last Sunday is because he not only just heard the word, he applied the word in faith. To just come into church does not solve our problems. Correct? Just because we do it, do things right, it doesn't solve our problem. And that's what I believe God was teaching them. He was telling them, my, my presence, my art, I'm not a good luck charm. He's not, okay, come on, just bring it from China, let's go and let's go fight right now. It's not that, it's rely, it's dependence. You know, if you go to a, a Hindu believer, Hindu's home, it's very interesting in their shrine or in their altar, uh, it, it's very, every of them uh, will have their own uh, own gods. Every family will have their god. And uh, on top of that, they'll have a big picture of the god that they serve, maybe elephant god or monkey god or whatever it is, they'll have that. But on top of after that, they'll have little other pictures and one of the pictures is who? Jesus Christ. You know, because they believe all roles lead to eternal life. And the thing is, they want to make sure it's like insurance policy. <laughs> Cover every possible. You know, if if the monkey gut doesn't work, let's try the elephant. If the elephant doesn't work, let's try the, you know, I was going to say giraffe, but there's no giraffe god no more. There's some other guy. And every family, you try the family god, you know, if that doesn't work, well, let's just try Jesus too, just in case. You know, let's bring Jesus into the mix of it. Because that's why if you ask a Hindu, if uh, you believe in Jesus, they'll say, oh yes, oh yes, yes. But do you believe Jesus is the only way? Now you got them thinking. Now you got to start stirring the spirit, you know. And, and what happens is this, this is all uh, like a good luck charm. This is all like a uh, something that, you know, just, you know, just keep our options open. 
Okay? Just like, you know, when you go for insurance, you know, when you go and get insurance, you want to make sure you're covered. You know, like, you know, when we, we, we travel anywhere, we would be traveling, my family and I, and if you rent a car, you know, one of the things that we would, because we are foreigners in the country, and we would say, now, uh, I, I want to hear, worst case scenario, anything happens, I walk away. I want that kind of coverage, coverage on, my, on, on my car. I'm not going to sit down and pay, tell me what do I pay for that. Because I'm not going to sit down and partially, no. I want something, if anything happens, the car goes over the cliff or somebody bang, I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to call you and let you know the car is spoiled, I'm going to walk away. That's the kind of coverage. I want to be covered every possible way. And I don't want, uh, you know, I don't want anything more than that. And sometimes we do that. We want to make sure every, you know, and I know, I remember growing up in Singapore, you know, and, and you know, here, because, you know, we have one mosque here, and the temples are not so many, but they are, but not so many, like, uh, it, it was easy to find more, uh, like, you know, the Buddhist temple, or the, the Taoist temple, and, uh, and all the different, in, 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 so what they will do is, like, before once, they will go to the, uh, the to the, uh, uh, you know, to, to the Buddhist, whatever they have, you know, they'll go for that. They'll go to the Taoist and go down there. they go to the Hindu temple after that. They'll go to the mosque. And after they come to the church, you know, and just make sure, you know, you're covered. You're okay. You know, and uh, it, it, and it's, it is kind of funny, though, but the thing is this. In, and, and many times we do that, don't we? See, the thing, what God wants us to do is to exercise our faith in Him and Him only. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I'm, Jesus did not say, I am an option. Jesus didn't say, consider me. He only, when, when the scripture says consider, it only says, consider your ways, the way you're living. Jesus never said, the Father never said, the Holy Spirit never said, consider me. You don't consider, no, He said, Jesus made a statement. I am the way, I am the truth. If you believe me, my word will work for you. No matter how many years you've been in bondage or, or how many years you've been in that struggling, you can be set free. Amen. And how many people came into the church hoping, coming into church, hoping, I just if I just mumble a few words, uh, you know, and gather that and read a few scriptures. I know of so many people who have read the Bible cover to cover, more than Christians have, yet they're not saved. Yet they're not saved. See, it's not just being in a place of worship. It's not just calling ourselves a Christian. Oh, if I would just wear a cross around my neck, I would be okay. I don't know. I, I think most of us would have uh, seen it. Uh, and I remember growing up. You know, now they have all these other movies like Twilight and different things, right? They have um, uh, that, that's going on. But remember the time when we grew up was uh, Dracula. Remember, Cow and Dracula, or, or they have the, uh, uh, those were the, you know, like 70s and 80s, remember? And what do they do? How do they counter Dracula? What was that? A cross and a holy? Well, that's what stick is, right? But that's right in the Bible. And they take the Bible out, right? And, uh, and, and, and uh, to put a cross out, and they'll have the holy water out. But let me tell you, in reality, no matter how much you show the Bible to the devil, if, if it's that easy, every time, okay, right now, let's let's take Rovi. Rovi, actually, she's not. You know, and, and, and look, we get all this, if I just do this, if I just do that, and I, you know, just like I told this lady who was just walking by, just right here at the corner, you know, of, uh, of, uh, of Austin Road, and, and just when she came to the Mother Mary statue, put the cigarette out of the side so that Mother Mary couldn't see that cigarette, you know. And, uh, you know, I was thinking to myself, how many times we do that also? Soon as we come into church, our language changes. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. God bless you, brother. You know, praise the Lord, you know, and all that. But as soon as we go out, our language comes back again. Correct? Not, not, I, know, I was very quick to judge her for a moment. I, I, I kind of laughed. Then I talked to myself, you know what? I am like that too. Maybe I don't smoke. But other ways we do that too. <laughs> we change when we are... Oh, it's a Sunday. Oh, it's a this day. It's you know that day, and and oh, we are with, with you know one of the things uh, you know sometimes when I'm de dealing with uh, people who don't know the Lord, you know they sometimes they they or even new Christians or people who you know they have problem with languages. You know I said, hey, no, you know, you're a pastor. Oh, I better be careful. I said, you know what? I know, well, if you can control yourself, that'll be great. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know what? Let God work it. 
because I don't want you to just control your language in my presence. And after that, you start, you know, so you, you know, I, I want to change in your life. Change your life once and for all. Amen. And many times we live like that. Just because I have a cross around my neck, or oh, I, I will be safe. Or just because I carry a Bible, I will be okay. And that's what happened to the, the people. They said, oh, if you just bring the ark here, our lives will be okay. If I, if I just bring the ark here, we will be okay. But God taught them a lesson. God says, you are not okay. They, they were happy that the ark came, but do you ever see them seeking the Lord about it? In the scripture, did you, did, in 11 verses we read, not once, the, 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 let me tell you, the Philistines were more God conscious than Israel was. They knew the ark. They knew. Oh, they, they were trembling. God has come to the camp. Yes, he did. But these people were not exercising the God who has come to the camp. Are you able to follow me today? Amen. Now I want to encourage you with that. In our lives, whatever we do, maybe today, you know, you already exercise. Maybe today it's like I'm talking to the choir. But the thing is just a reminder for us. But whatever we do, it is by faith. If you read the word of God, it is by faith. You apply the word by faith if it needs to work in our lives. Amen. You know, if all it's going to take is just show the Bible and we're going to see, see the changes, what we have to do is take, let's take the Bible, let's go all out and touch every person who comes in the street. They're going to be saved. The home of it doesn't work that way. We share the gospel and there's a faith that has been exercised on your part. There's a faith that's exercised on the hearer's part. Look, Christianity is about faith being exercised. Believing in the God who came to save us. And like they say, just because you go to McDonald's doesn't make you a burger. Just because you go, go to the, you know, the garage doesn't make you a car. You know, just because we come to church doesn't make us a Christian either. You know, and uh, we do live, especially in Asia and places we do live in a very superstitious, you know, and, and even though people are advancing so much, but still people live in fear. You know, and that's why, you know, if you talk to people and say, would you like me to pray? Yes, you just pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. You know, because they want to make sure. I, mean, I know there's a sincerity in it, and there's an opportunity for us to minister. But sometimes it's because you just want to make sure you get a good coverage. All right? You know, just, just get a good coverage and make sure that I'm protected. So I want to encourage you today. You know, just don't read the word so that your problem will be solved. You can read the Bible as much as you want, but your problem will never be solved. You will never get healed. You'll never have a breakthrough if you don't apply in faith what you read. If we don't come to church in faith, it is just coming and going for a good period of time. That's it. Just like what we say about water baptism. What about this? Amen. What about this simply is, we, we, uh, you know, any lessons, whether for, for once ago, what about this? What we say is, two, two things can happen. You can go to the water, come out wet. Or you can go in there with meaning and faith, knowing that you've been water baptized. That God has saved you, God has changed you, God has redeemed you, God has set you free. Amen. You can go in there and get wet. You're going to get wet anyways. And that's all. So how was water baptism? I got wet. Or you're going to say, I truly, I laid down everything down. My old man, I'm a brand new man in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And you have the declaration of that faith in you. So it's the same thing. We can go in. What do you do? I went to church. Or you can say, I went there. And everything that's what the Bible tells us in, in the book of Hebrews, without faith it is impossible to please him. Because if anyone who comes to him must believe that he is, that he is what? God. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. I believe you are people of faith. So wherever you are, I know sometimes we might be challenged. Oh, if I can just, uh, just mumble a few prayers, if I can just say a few things here. No, everything. Even I mentioned last week, yes, if you call on Jesus. But that one word, make sure it is back. Just because you say Jesus doesn't mean it's going to solve your problem. It's got to be exercised by faith. And that's what Israel did not. They didn't exercise their faith with the, with, the, with, with the ark. They didn't repent before God for not bringing the ark in the first place. And guess what happened? God taught them even a greater lesson. Not only defeat two times. Now 
they even lost the ark. The next few chapters, if you read it, how it shows that how Phineas and Hophilus, uh, Hophilus and Phineas were the, the sons of Eli, and they were captured. In the next chapter, the, the boys, they died. The Eli also dies because the ark is gone. And, 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 uh, and, uh, and I believe this Hophilus wife gives birth. And she was going to give birth and she's going to die. And she says, my husband has died. My father-in-law is dead. The ark is gone. And she calls his, her son, Ichabod, which means the glory has departed. You know why the glory departed from Israel? How many of you are familiar with that word, Ichabod? Glory has departed. You know why the glory departed? Simply because faith was not present. When there's faith, the presence of God comes once again. Because they're not exercising their faith. They're not doing what God wanted them to do. Amen. And we don't want to be Ichabod, do we? We want the glory of God in our lives. Yeah. We want the glory of God to shine through our lives. Well, and that's the only way it's going to happen, not because we look like Christians, we act like Christians. No, no, no. We believe as a Christian needs to believe. Yeah. As a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When we stand up to our feet, I mean, let's give the Lord a great big hand. Thank you, Jesus, for your word.